Hi guys, it's Tampa Tech, and today we're going to be fixing a Sylvania TV. I'm fixing this TV for my friend Joey, and uh, he's my home theater tech buddy. Just showing you that it has no power. And if I got to tangle this fisherman knot, I don't know how the hell he did this. What the hell? Look, I made a knot by t untangling it. Symbols. Anyway. Plug this in. Flip it around. This is a Slovenia model number L. Let's see. Uh, so we're gonna crap the uh, LC thirty two zero SS two. Let me go ahead and turn it on. I can freaking find the freaking button. All right. Power. No power. Plugged in. No power. Bring dead. Newt, this TV needs more screws. <laughs> Honey, I like the TV, but it doesn't have enough screws in it. I like my TV to have 50,000 screws in it. The TV really technically just needs two freaking, what, four screws the most? Yeah, the TV only needs four freaking screws on the corners, around the corners. That's all it needs. Is it good to lean on this? Oops. Probably not. Damn it! This one's stuck. It's always the last one. Come off, damn it! If I shake it hard enough, you think it'll come off? I need a crowbar, guys. Crowbar! Nurse! Crowbar! Oh, there's a screw right here on the corner. Don't forget the screw! on the side of the TV. Sneaky little screw. Screw you, screw! Oh my god, it still won't come off. I'm gonna break this TV even more before I even get started fixing it. Alright, where's the bulge capacitors? Aw, oh, I'm screwed now. There's no bolts to capacitors. <laughs> Actually, I gotta fix this one for real. Oh, pop fuse. Oh my god, it never happens, by the way. It's well, never, ever, well, what ever. What causes the fuse to pop? Exactly. So you gotta find that in Ooh. order to repair the TV. You're, you're my Watson. Shut up. <laughs> you're an asshole. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is always unplug it. Unless you like to like get electrocuted. That's your fetish. Anyway, so let me just ex explain this. This is the AC part of the power supply. If you guys can see it, let me uh, scan it over there, just a little hair. All right, so this is the AC part. And the AC um, section of the power supply turns into DC voltage and powers on right here, the main board on the right side. And look how small, this is like empty. It's empty inside, like my soul. Can you redo that? Why? Because he said, you sounded like Star Trek. Right here. Huh, huh. Goes to the DC board. You sound like you were on Star Trek. I'm not editing this video at all. You just insulted me. You are editing it. I have the worst editing skills whatsoever. I'm not going to edit that. I'm, le I'm letting people see you the true. To. No, this is the true video. This is true. Behind the scenes, I'm leaving it as a reality show like TV repair world. All right. So anyway, this is. Turning into this is the main board, the video board, the main logic board. This is the brains. All right, this is the heart. All right, don't put your ear to it because you get electrocuted. All right. So anyhow, this is the inverter board. These transformers, they're like, they turn on the backlight. So that's the, what the inverter part of the board does. All right. So this is a power supply and inverter board all in one combined combo unit. All right. Um, what is this up here? What the hell is this? These are the buttons down here. I know that. Here, yeah, these are the buttons down here. And the buttons go to the main board. So when you hit power on the button, it goes to the main board. The main board say, hey, 
heart, turn on. And it turns on. It's like magic. Digital magic. Um, so anyhow, let me go ahead and find out using my Fluke 12 multimeter that you cannot get anymore because this thing's 10 years old. I think it makes it antique, right? If it's like over 10 years old, doesn't it make it into an antique? I have an antique meter. <laughs> Digital. I don't know. Alright, so now, I know I have, alright, so you want to put it in continuity mode, so, which is diode mode, and the fuse is bad, or else I would be hearing, you know, a short signal. So let's pop that sucker out, make sure you unplug the power, again, unplug the power, let's get a fuse, um, fuse, Watson, where are your fuses? Uh, pause the video. We'll find the fuse. Alright, so I got another fuse. Alright, and on the fuse, this one is the bad one it is 4 amp. It says 4A. I don't know if you can see that. See how it's a, I don't know. You can see that it's busted in there. It's, it's shattered, the fuse. It's like a filament, like a line, like a wire in there. And you can see that it's blown. It's burnt up. So let's put the new one in and watch the sparks fly, baby. It's probably like a, if, usually if a fuse pops, it could be a power surge from your electric company, or it could be a shorted part in the AC department. So let's find out. So if this one pops. Yep, and this one pops. So they didn't get a surge, it's something bad in the power supply because this one popped. So let's take this out again. Ooh, sorry I stepped on your toe. <laughs> sorry about that. It's okay. Amy Frankenstein. Step on two. Let's try um, to find out where the short's coming from. So we know we're getting a short. There's a short in the circuit. Let's find out where it's stemming from. So we're gonna test some parts in the power supply. The things I look for are diodes. A diode is basically, it's uh, this black thing. I don't know if you can see that. And this one's good actually, it's 0.4. It reads 0.4 and then the other way it reads pretty close to open line. You should say OL, but there's probably something else making it say that something else. So it, it reads 0.4. It's not reading short. Short means this. Let's read another one. Oh, I found the shorted diode. You little sneaky son of a bitch. And this one's good. And this diode's good. And this diode's good. And this diode's good. And oh, another shorted diode. I got lucky. I'm not even Irish. I'm a lucky Italian. You're right, I don't feel lucky. So anyway, I'm gonna take this off, replace the diodes, and hopefully fix it. So it's diode number 610, and then the diode 6, D611. So let's go ahead and uh, replace those. And remember, unplug this, and then you wanna unplug some of this crap. You want to pinch that down, like that. And then this one, just wiggle out real safe. Don't force anything. I'm going to get Genghis Kong taking this thing apart. Where the hell is that? Thanks for telling me. I don't care. Right. Let's replace those diodes and see if it turns on. So we got two bad parts. Ooh, there's one in the middle. Let's take it off. Actually, you know what? I wanna. So it's basically that one right there is bad, and that one right there is bad. And how I know that? I'll show you one more time. You put it in diode mode. Diode mode is push that all the way to the right on the Fluke 12 multimeter. And you put a diode mode, it looks like a little arrow facing to the right. And 
and you put your negative lead to the silver part of the diode, and it reads shorted. It reads like that, zero, zero, zero across the screen. And same thing over there. And I can read this transistor right here, see if that's bad. Sometimes they go bad. That's why they're on heat sinks, because they get real hot. Oh, this transistor took out those diodes. You son of a... Oh my god, I gotta order all those parts? You suck! Uh, I gotta. I don't even have those parts. I have the diodes, but I don't have that transistor. And the, uh, that transistor, I had to cross-reference, and I could get it on Amazon or eBay or Shop Jimmy or River Valley Electronics or a bunch of other places online. Digi. Um, what else? There's a couple of other ones. Go to my Tampa Tech Dot blogspot.com and if you go there's a link there on my channel if you go there you can see like there's a huge list to the right if you click on it and there's like a list of the, all of these different places that sell TV boards and parts but it looks like this transistor is the culprit it definitely reads shorted so anyway I'm probably gonna have to order that I can't do the repair right now it sucks I wanted to do the repair for you guys fix it and be like, boom, abracadabra, it's working. But I can't. How depressing. This is an ink, I mean, there's gonna be a part two to this video. And I'm probably gonna drink even more beer. No, I'm just kidding. I only had one beer, so I'm a little talkative. When I drink beer, I talk a lot. And uh, a pint of Coors Light. They sell them in pints now. Yeah, that looks like that would probably be it. I think that's the fix. So there's three bad parts. The diodes, the two diodes, D610, D611, and Q600. And I think that is it, folks. That is it. I think that is all that there is to... Let me check this transistor right here. Oh my god, this is shorted too. I got another shorted transistor. Yeah, this freaking power supply has a lot of bad parts. Freaking screw it, I just ordered the board. I'm gonna order the board from Shop Jimmy or someone, Amazon or eBay. I, uh, actually, probably not eBay, they don't warranty their boards. But anyhow, that's pretty much it. That's gonna be their repair. So once you fix that, then you're good, good as gold. And you got working TV. And this board probably maybe like 50 bucks power supply. And just put it all back together when you're done. But if you want to, I, I, I tested those bad parts for you. So you got to replace the fuse, the transistor right here, which is Q601, Q600, diode 611, diode 610. But in all reality, if you're replacing that many parts, you know, I don't know. You, you, your time is money, so get the power supply. It might be worth it for you. Who knows? You can put all those power parts in, and if it's a bad transformer or something else, it could just take all those parts out all over again. So you gotta like conserve your time and really think about: is it really worth it? Do you just want a working board when you get it? I don't know. It's up to you. But that's how you're gonna learn. You're really gonna learn the most if you actually keep on trying to fix it all the way through. You know, replacing parts, that's probably the best way is uh, being a technician, component level technician, trying to figure out which component, transistor, diode, resistor, you know, I mean capacitor, transformer, which part is bad. And it's kind of like detective work. That's where it lies. All right, I just figured I'll show you guys me troubleshooting this uh, Sylvania TV. Thanks for watching. Post a comment. Check out my other YouTube videos, how to uh, repair plasma TVs and LCD TVs and tablets and computers on my Tampa Tech channel and subscribe to Tampa Tech. So I'm probably just on it. To be honest, I'm going to just order the power supply in this guy and just be done with it and just put the new one in. Even though I found a couple of shorted parts, I'm not going to... Uh, deal with it. I'm fixing this TV for free, so it's actually my friend Joey's going to order the power supply. I'm just going to put it in for him. So it probably cost maybe like, I don't know, 50 bucks. So.
Not bad for a TV repair. Average TV repair cost for this would probably be maybe 150 bucks. Who knows? That's like $100 labor and $50 for the board. That's that's what I um, when I worked for Best Buy. That's how much they used to charge. Anywhere between 150 to 200 bucks depends on the time and the gas to get out there and how many trips you go to try to fix the TV and stuff like that. That's what they all account for. All right, later, guys. This is a long ass video.